Hey, first grade. So we each have a piece of white paper in front of us. The first thing we're going to do with that is we're going to write our name on the back side and then flip it over. Now at each one of our tables, we have some square pieces of white paper just like this. Your job with that is to choose either a orange, yellow, or green piece of oil pastel. Depending on what color you've chosen, you're going to trace around the outside of that square on a large white paper. Here's what I mean. Line up the corners, push it in, make sure it's nice and lined up. We don't want it crooked like this, we just want it lined up. And we're going to hold with one hand. We're going to take that pastel, and they're nice and soft, so you don't have to really press that hard. And you're just going to draw something that kind of helps you see a square. Now, as we've been talking about in class, that square is a geometric shape. And you're going to do that a few more times. Line it up in the corner down at the bottom. Remember, we don't want it hanging off like this. And trace around the corners. So we have something that is starting to look like this. It's OK if it's overlapped. If you've got any overlapping space, we can fill it in with paint later. And repeat that one more time. Once you're done with this, you should have something that looks just like this on your white paper. Now, if you ended up with any gaps, kind of like mine, that's OK. Just use a little extra pastel to color it in. Put your pastel back in the box, just like this. Slide it closed, and now you're ready to paint. Now it's really, really important that as we start learning to paint in here, um, we have a few supplies in front of us. Supply number one is a paper towel. Supply number two, water cup. And supply number three, our paint tray. Before we do anything with paint, especially watercolor paint, what we're going to do is take a clean brush, dip it in a little bit of water, and put a drop of water in each one of these paints. That's going to help soften them up. Now with watercolor paint, easy thing to remember, the more water you use, the lighter your color is going to come out. The less water you use, the darker your color is going to come out. Our paintbrush only ever goes from water to paint to paper to water. Every once in a while we'll have to dry our brush out, but our brush never goes anywhere other than water, paint, paper, back to water. So choose either a red, an orange, or a yellow, and you're going to paint the entire square one color. And I think since I used yellow here, I'm actually going to use a red. The cool thing about oil pastel is since it's made out of oil, it won't stick with paint. You can see it start to spread out, and eventually when that paint dries, we'll still have a nice yellow line in the middle. The neat thing about watercolor paint is that a little bit of watercolor paint goes a very long way. We don't want a very dark background, so we want to make sure we're using enough water. And it's okay if we've got some spots like this or like this that are darker than others. You see I just dripped some paint right there. That's okay. I'll show you how to fix it. Just brush it over. Almost done. A little extra water. And that's it. We're ready to let this dry so we can finish working on the next step. Leave your project at your table, raise your hand, I will come and pick it up from you, and I will move it to a place where it's safe to dry. Now your job with that paper towel is going to be to dry up any extra water and paint that accidentally ended up on the table. Now here's how we clean our brushes out. All you have to do is dab your brush a few times inside that water container, just like this. 
Take your paper towel, dry off that tip, pull it out so it's nice and clean. Close the lid of your paints, leave your brush right there, take your paper towels and put them in the garbage can. You can leave your paint, leave your brush, and leave the water container at your table. And you're on to the next step. Each one of us has four pieces of white paper cut into a square. Each table has two or three stencils in the shape of a leaf. As we've been talking about, leaves are an, a great example of organic shapes. Now here's what you're going to do with your leaves. The leaf is just a stencil, which means we're not going to color on it. All we have to do is lay it on our square of paper, and we're going to put some fingers in the middle to make sure it doesn't move, and we're going to use a regular pencil to lightly, carefully, and slowly trace around the outside edge. We can move our paper, but we want to make sure that we don't move the leaf, because if we move the leaf, it's going to be hard to line up. Now if you see what I did there, every once in a while with the stencil it's going to happen. You're accidentally going to end up tracing on the inside of the stencil and that's okay. So what we have at the end is something that looks just like this. You're going to do that on each of your four pieces of paper. Stencil goes down, you're going to press with some fingers and hold it steady, and you're going to lightly use a regular pencil to trace around the outside. This can be a little bit tricky for some of us at first, so if you need any help, please just raise your hand. You want four leaf stencils on each one of these pieces of paper. Okay, before I cut, I'm actually going to end up using my watercolor paint again to paint the inside of my leaf. Now think back to what color you used in the background, because you don't want to paint your leaf the same color as that background. Since I did red, I'm actually going to switch it up and end up using orange out of my paint tray this time. So just a quick reminder, whenever we have paints, we need a water container, a paper towel, a brush, and a paint tray. Take some water, add it into your paint to soften it up. Uh, make sure you've got your paper towel handy. Paint always goes from water to paint to paper, back to water. Sorry guys, a little off the camera there. There we go. Alright, we don't want too much paint in our leaf, and it's okay if we go outside the lines because we're going to end up cutting these off the paper once it's dry. Just like that. Use the same color paint on each one of your leaves. So on my next leaf, after I'm done with that, I'm going to set it to the side for a minute. I'm going to use orange again. And remember, you don't want it too dark. We want it nice and light, so we're using plenty of water. And once we've got that guy painted, set it aside, and we're going to finish doing that with the rest of our leaves. Once you've got those leaves painted, then you're going to use your scissors and you're going to cut them out carefully. For cleanup, once your leaves are painted, before you cut, take your paper towel, clean up any extra paint that ended up on your table, take your brush, gently dab it in your water container, dry it out with your paper towel, set it on the table, close your paint tray, now you're cleaned up. Alright, once my leaves are dry, I'm going to take some scissors, and my scissors are obviously a little bit bigger than yours, um, but we're going to carefully cut along the outside edge where we see that pencil line. Now each time I cut, I'm making sure that I'm staying on that pencil line. And if you watch how my scissors work, my hand is flat on the table, and the only time that anything is moving is my left hand that's holding the paper is moving to turn the paper in the scissors. 
and I'm going real slow. I want to make sure I stay on that line. And it's very important that as we get down here towards the stem, that we're making sure we're going slow because we don't want to cut that stem off. And snip. All our scrap paper can go into a pile for now until we're done cutting out all our leaves. And once all our leaves are cut out, we are going to put all that paper into the trash can. Taking my time. Only time anything moves is my left hand moving the paper and the scissors, making sure I'm going slow and staying on that pencil line. As I'm cutting this out, I'm remembering to myself, leaves are great examples of organic shapes because they're stuff that we would see outside instead of in a math book. Take my scraps, put it in the pile, and I'm going to keep cutting. Always really important to remember that my fingers are never anywhere close to the blade of my scissors. Alright, I've got my four stencils drawn out on my paper nice and carefully. Now I'm going to have to open up my pastels again and I'm going to choose the same color pastel that I used to make my line. And my paper is dry, but I don't need it right now because I'm going to use that same pastel color that I used here. And I'm going to trace around the outside of each leaf, right over the top of the pencil. Take your time, go slow, and trace your pencil. But this time, remember to add the inside, since leaves have designs that look kind of like this. You're going to do that on each of your four leaves. And then, you're going to need a pair of scissors to cut them out. All right, now we're ready to finish up our project. And all we need right now is a little bit of glue. We're gonna twist this orange piece that way so it opens up. And if you listen, if you can squeeze it gently and hear air, that means glue is gonna come out as well. Now we need to arrange our painted cut leaves on our project so that they rotate around in a pattern, kind of like this. And for some of us, it's going to be easier to set them down like that before we start gluing. Um, that way we can remember how they're going to end up glued as we move along the project. For me, it's easier to do it one at a time. So I flip my leaf over, uh, and I remember on the back side, dot, dot, not a lot. I want to make sure and get one little small dot down there on the stem. And my stem needs to touch the center of my project. And I'm going to glue my leaf down just like that. Now it might take a few presses to get that glue to stick on there, but what we want is something that's glued flat and ready to move on to my next space. Dot, dot, not a lot, and one little dot down there in the stem stem touching the center of my project, just like that. Do that for the rest of your leaves, please. After you got everything glued on there, make sure your glue bottle is closed. Take the tip and twist it so when you squeeze it, you don't hear any more air coming out. All right, now we've got a project that shows geometric shape in the sense that we've got a square out here and also organic shape because we've got a leaf shape in the middle. Now our last step is going to be to open up those oil pastels one more time. And this time you get to choose your own color, whatever color you want, and you're going to make sure that we can see that square nice and bright. So you're going to go back through and retrace those lines one more time. Put that oil pastel away, choose one more color, and this time I think I'm going to go with this beautiful light green color. And now what you're going to do is you're going to trace around the outside of those leaves one final time. It's okay if you get a little wobbly. Once you've got that last leaf traced, make sure to 
take your oil pastel, put it back in the box, and please slide it closed. Now your last job, if you'd like to, you can take a marker and you can come back in and you can retrace some of the veins on your leaves to make them stand out and emphasize them just like that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a project that's almost finished. The only thing I'm forgetting is to put my name on the back if I haven't already done it. All right, my friends, there's an example of what a finished project can look like. Remember, you've got squares creating geometric shapes, and you've got leaves creating organic shapes, but you've also got leaves that repeat all the way around, so it's a pattern of leaves because we have a leaf in a square, a leaf in a square, a leaf in a square, and a leaf in a square.